And congratulations to all of you out there in podcast land because it's time for another goddamn new and improved Rage Select podcast. This week, we're not only new, we're not only improved, but Amanda, I think you were on one podcast. Yeah, like years ago. Years ago. You're back this week. We're doing the podcast and uh, there's no time for for uh, pleasantries because Good. we're we're fast we're lean we're 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 like a swimmer or a runner or yeah. like a uh, we're the Usain Bolt of podcasting. Damn right. I don't even know what that is. Some kind of Thor thing, I assume. Yeah, yes, but, of course. Uh, before we get started, uh, man and I just got done eating a few naked chalupas, and we're going to give a two-seconds review. That was all right. Tasted like Taco Bell. Yeah, it tasted like Taco Bell. My <laughs> heart hurts. I don't know if it's directly related, but it feels like it's struggling to Is it yearning eat. for another naked chalupa? I, yeah, that's what it is. It's the... Yeah. <laughs> Celebrate Valentine's Day naked. Yep. Naked Chalupa. Naked Chalupa. <laughs> if you don't have anybody this Valentine's Day, get nude. Taco Bell will get naked for you. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough dillying and dallying. So let's jump on over to the news. Okay. Uh, this is an exciting week because we had some earnings calls this week, which means that companies had to like talk about the things that they are going to be doing in the future. Uh, one such company was Activision, and uh, they came out to say that the next entry in the Call of Duty franchise is going to be a return to, quotey fingers, traditional combat. Um, so now, no more like space stuff? Yes, which is interesting because um, this article, I was getting this off of... Um, uh, a game informer they were like it'll be returning to traditional combat after it's brief uh, fling with sci-fi and infinite warfare i'm like brief motherfucker because <laughs> before that we had advanced warfare which yeah. is kevin spacey future we had black ops 2 which was right black ops 3 no before infinite warfare was black ops 3 yes which is all futury and then before that was advanced warfare which was all futury and then before that was I forget. Yeah. It's been it's been the, a future something. It's been the future for a while now. Yeah. Um So we're going back from the future? Back. We got to go back, Marty. <laughs> we got to go back. It's your sequels, Marty. <laughs> Something's got to be done about your sequels. Aww. <laughs> um, Let's go to the West. Yeah. So I don't know what this means. I don't know if this means they're going to be going back all the way to, like, say, World War II um, or if they're going to be going back to modern warfare. Because the thing is that modern warfare is starting to kind of be a little, I mean, like. <laughs> Are they like, we're going back to traditional combat and hoping for traditional sales. <laughs> that's right. uh, yeah. So the, in a quote, it said the publisher will be, quote, giving the players what they want now yeah. i picked this as the lead story because i have i, I here's my thing mm -hmm. for as long as i can remember mm -hmm. for as long as there has been an internet with a comment section for people to comment nobody seems to like call of duty seems to be a franchise that everybody hates yeah and yet buys anyway yes like i remember going all the way back to modern warfare 2's not going to have dedicated servers was that it or, yeah, yeah right? and people were like, "Oh, we're signing a petition. Nobody's going to buy that." It was like <laughs> top seller on Steam. I bought it. I liked it. Yeah. So, uh, when Infinite Warfare, when the trailer for Infinite Warfare came out last year, obviously it was uh, it made history as being like you know the least liked video on YouTube yeah. since Friday. Downvoted to oblivion. I mean, I was. I think it had more downvotes than the Ghostbusters trailer, to be honest. Jesus. But there um, weren't any girls in that trailer. In what trailer? The in Infinite the Warfare Infinite trailer? Infinite Warfare trailer. Were there any women? I think there was a few. I think there was also a robot. Maybe that's why I got downvoted. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> but in any case, uh, it's, it's, I, I wonder, I wonder, this is what I wonder. Is there anything that Activision can do to placate fans of, of, of Call of Duty? I think one good traditional combat, like set in modern to maybe past... You know, sometime that we recognize that isn't future or made up uh, if it looks good. I mean, the problem is it's like you have to go back to doing what you used to do. Yeah. And you also have to do something new so we don't get bored. Yeah. And the combination is impossible to do or, or really super difficult to do. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, even though this is kind of contra this isn't controversial, but it's controversial for me uh, to, to say this in my own mind, whatever for whatever that's worth. I think that it's been a while. I would like to see a new Call of Duty game set in World War II. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is that we've had a full um, uh, a full generational jump in uh, console architecture right. since the last World War II Call of Duty game. 
which was what World at War was that Vietnam or was that World War Two? Was it three? Was it Call of Duty three? The last one that took place in World War Two? It's been a while. It's been a while. I don't even so remember. I'd like to see one on new systems. You yeah. know, I could see all this stuff all over again, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just wonder whether or not there is any. Because, as you well know, once they take it back to whatever the traditional roots are, Mm -hmm. the people that are fans of Advanced Warfare and Infant Warfare are going to be like, hey, man, I bought your game. I was supporting you, and now you're fucking pissing in my mouth, man. I mean, but were were they getting good? Really pissing in your mouth? That's where we went? Uh, Some of them like it. (laughs) (laughs) It's like I like to imagine Activision's business strategy. Um, But did they sell enough that they care about losing those people? I think think it's – I think the Call of Duty so far has done well – Sales wise, it's just that their trend has been downward if you stack up the sales, right? Yeah. That it's been going down and they want to get that line to go back up again. So I think we're going to start to enter a new phase called fan, Call of, of Fan Service, right? Yeah. Where it's just going to be trying them trying to figure out what they can do to placate the entire internet. Yeah, but it might work and then we're going to end up with like a mediocre game that everyone. Well, like. it's also, I mean, I don't know. It's also worth noting that Sledgehammer Games is the one doing this. They're the ones that finished Modern Warfare 3 after Weston Zampella left. Mm-hmm. But they're also responsible for Advanced Warfare that I actually quite liked. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, also, Activision reported in their earnings call that we're going to see Destiny 2 before the year is out. So That's exciting. 2017 is going to be Destiny 2. And for everybody who has forgotten, this one's going to be... Uh, on the PC as well, so they're definitely going to have to kind of change up a little bit of the way that they've put it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hoping that Bungie learned from the mistakes of Destiny 1 and that this has a much more fleshed out story component to it. Where yeah, it's not well, just... all the story for it and like websites or yeah a lot of it was in websites but when they came out with the taken king later on they started to do a much better job of putting in like full-blown cinematics and like voiceovers and stuff so i'm hoping that if destiny 2 can can learn from the problems of destiny 1 destiny 1 was just like right on the cusp of being a game that i was going to be really into Mm -hmm. and then just kind of fell down i don't know have you ever had any interest in destiny no i'm just i'm not a halo person and i'm not a destiny person it's not my i don't like the feel of the gameplay yeah no i get that because it feels like halo yeah and i don't like Halo. I, I feel like it's just it just doesn't work for me it's like counterintuitive to me i just i just want them to do something to at least try to cover up the naked like well you got to log in every day and do this daily uh gauntlet in order to get enough points to unlock this thing on this vendor so you can get this gun that's got a dumb name why don't you just spend money joe why don't you just throw some money at it uh, de- you can't that's cosmetic that's really? what they did in destiny yeah it was all cosmetic you oh, gotta like fuck that do your daily grind uh i'll tell you about uh, t- speaking of throwing money apparently one of the things in destiny 2 or with destiny 2 is that uh it probably is going to come out this year because apparently there's a clause in their contract that says if they don't put it out this year then stock options from Bungie revert back to Activision as kind of like a bounty clause in their huh. contract which seems really weird to me <laughs> they're like so we're fucked so uh, good news for destiny fans back to the whole pissing in the mouth thing yeah. right this is just bobby <laughs> codex like open up you know i uh, um which everyone's I'm, getting pissed in the mouth th- today huh it's, uh, hey man you have a little i'm very tired <laughs> I find one thing We're that works for me. We're going to get to the me. question section. It's going to get real weird. <laughs> so <laughs> what video game character would you most like to piss? No, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I found this really interesting because uh, this came from a Kotaku story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, this is interesting. I'm sure this happens, and we probably just don't ever hear about it from other deals. I mean, there was a deal famously with Obsidian where they got a bonus based on their Metacritic score yeah. and stuff like that. There's dumb shit happening all over the, the yeah. video game industry. Um, but what I did find is that at the very bottom of this story, and I have to... I don't like Kotaku very much, but I will... And I will call them out when they do shit like this. Is the last line of this story is in other Destiny Two news, the nonsensical Reddit rumor, which is a link to some dumb thing on Reddit mm-hmm. floating around today, um, is very fake. And then, but in parentheses, it says it's floating around today. And then the parentheses says and embarrassingly, embarrassingly covered by websites like VG Twenty Four Seven, like literally just putting a boot oh, into wow. the yeah. <laughs> like, get a load of these assholes. Yeah, and it's a link to the story on their website, which has been proved fake. I'm just like, come on, Kartak, can we have a little class? Yeah, Why don't that, you? that is kind of <laughs> fucked up. Come on. Um, next up, uh, Ubisoft, it turns out, is 
was not super happy with the way that Watch Dogs 2 uh, launched last year. Oh, that's a disappointing. Earnings call as well. But what I did find really interesting about this is that um, interesting slash troubling is that apparently the best money makers for Ubisoft last year were Rainbow Six mm-hmm. and um, The Division, uh, quite frankly, because The Division still has something like 5 million people playing it. and That's boring. Like expansions and stuff like yeah. that. Um which kind of bums me out because for the last of the games they put out in the last two years, Watch Dogs 2 was the first really exciting piece of game yeah. p- the play that they I feel like they put out. Um, and I really don't want them to go just do more Rainbow Six games and do more crap like The Division. I'm sorry, people who really like The Division, but I just don't like shooting a guy in the face for 20 minutes to level up. Like, it just yeah. doesn't do it for I me. I thought Watch Dogs 2 was so good. It's really disappointing. Like, it yeah. just seemed like, like everybody that bought it liked it or at least like thought it was decent and but not enough people bought it. Apparently the quote is that launch was not dynamic as expected, uh, but they did say that the momentum was positive. It's just I really hope that this doesn't pivot them into doubling down on things like the division and Rainbow Six because I'm really tired of playing Ubisoft military shooters <laughs> or these Frenchy French military shooters yeah. that they put out. Yeah. Or at least if you're gonna do that. Give me a new, uh, give me a new Splinter Cell. That's all I'm asking. Really? It's been like three or four years. I like Splinter Cell. Okay. Fucking just drive, p- drive that dump truck of money up to Michael <laughs> Ironside's house and just give him whatever it takes. Whatever, yeah. Whatever it takes. If you have to, piss in his mouth. <laughs> That's right. If you have to, if he, if he wants you to do that. Only if he asks. Don't force it. That's right. Don't make it weird, man. Eve's <laughs> Gil- Gilmot. He'll piss in your mouth if you ask him. Real nice. <laughs> oh, um. Next up, I have a hilarious story yeah. uh, that I really, really like. So, Final Fantasy fifteen. Oh, I've heard about this. Final Fantasy fifteen. Oh, Final Fantasy fifteen. Uh, don't worry, folks. This is not going to turn into me carping about Final Fantasy fifteen for twenty minutes because, quite frankly, we don't have the time. <laughs> um, but apparently, they've been putting out all this DLC and updates and stuff for Final Fantasy fifteen. Mm-hmm. I get the feeling. I actually get the feeling watching the way that this shit is going down that they needed another year and a half to finish that game yeah. and that they just chopped what they had into a box and put it out because everything that I've been hearing about this is that there's all these updates. There's like these winter festivals, this blah, blah, blah. And this is all stuff that in days past you would already be in the game. Like yeah. wouldn't come later I mean, on. Isn't that kind of the norm for a lot of video games now? Like yeah, just sort I guess- of here's half the game and like Hitman, we have waiting for every episode to come out. And- yeah, but at least every episode of Hitman was a complete, part like mm-hmm. that what i don't like about final fantasy is that it feels like they put out a 60 hour game that's not finished and yeah. that you're gonna need to wait for a year worth of updates so that almost is like well, why would i even play this now anyway anyway okay. so the there was gonna be an update coming out for final fantasy 15 where all the characters in the game are going to get the magitech exo suit uh which i i didn't know about this but i was reading the description for this and apparently um it says the magitech exo suits which give you invincibility and improve your fishing skills. Oh, good. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah, because I was having a lot of trouble with those. Because <laughs> that's what I really wanted to do. Has there ever been a fishing mini game in a video game where you're just like, ooh, yay, I it's mean, the uh, fish game? No. Good. Me Maybe. Neither. I was somebody in the comments going to be like, actually, <laughs> you no, forgot. No. The, I, I could say, uh-huh. I, could, I can think back into my history, there's never been one that I gave two shits about. Now, I mean, if you in the comments... Like, yeah have one that you like that's great i'm not saying there are bad fishing games i'm saying that when i play a game about a bunch of uh uh japanese dudes like throwing fireballs and using swords that are way too big and they got spiky hair not too concerned about their fishing techniques don't care i mean what about like mario party has fishing in it sometimes don't like mario party you're a monster i am i'm a monster i quit yeah (laughs) but apparently you're not going to see these magitech (laughs) exosuits because unfortunately they look a little bit too much like their new Power Rangers costume. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything remotely close to a Power Rangers costume, Saban will murder you. <laughs> they will hire someone. You will be gone from time and space itself. Well, what I find interesting is the way that this was couched is that they were getting ready to put this out. and They put out promo materials with these suits. Yeah. And that somebody from Saban or whoever, it, it doesn't actually say Saban, but I'm pretty sure it's Saban, yeah. called them up and was like, Hey guys, uh, <laughs> bad news. So you've got 
a bunch of teens and they're in suits that are different primary colors. I think you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, these are going to be changed up and we will get to see the final product at some point. Um, moving on. I am going to skip a few things here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new trailer for Dark Souls 3, and that I'm not skipping. Uh, Dark why, Souls 3. why would you not skip that one? That one should be skipped. <laughs> uh, Dark Souls 3, The Ringed City. There's a four-minute kind of gameplay demo trailer <laughs> out there. Somebody awkwardly playing the game. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've never been a huge fan of these because they always turn off all the HUD elements, so it's like you can't see how hard their people are getting actually hit. Like, I, I have a yeah. feeling that invincibility is turned on here and that when I play this game, all these things are going to kill you in one hit. Yeah, probably. Um, I don't know. This is kind of interesting. There's some there's some stuff here. I mean, as a person who likes Dark Souls, it's my, this is their last chance. I don't know if you know this, Amanda, but they've said they're not making any more. Well, um, Miyazaki said he's not making any more Souls games. Uh -huh. The Souls franchise, I believe, is on hold for the moment. Um this is the last DLC for what is probably, at least for the time being, the last Souls game. Okay. Uh, there are a bunch of problems, or not problems, but there are a bunch of holes in the story of Dark Souls 3, and this is like their last chance to fix it. There was do you a, think they're going to, or do you think they're just going to introduce a bunch of new holes? I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, <clears throat> this trailer shows us a lot of stuff that's kind of all based around this area towards the end of the game where everything is sideways and all fucked up and eschered. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a few things like this angel. There were some angels in the game that we never really found out an answer. Like, who are they? Um, there's also this knight that has the dark sign on him, which is kind of interesting. I don't know, though. This this isn't doing a whole hell of a lot for me. Like, Why not? So the thing is that the last DLC, Ashes of Ariandel, was all like in a snow area, right? Mm -hmm. And Dark Souls only has a couple of snow areas. Um, this is in kind of like a ruined cathedral with knights and some magical bros in it. Yeah. That's all of Dark Souls 3 is that, is ruined castles with knights and, and so magic. So it's all over the place. Is that a bad thing? Well, no. It's just that I guess I was looking for something a little bit different than more of what we had already seen in the game. Like Because yeah. this is the last DLC. This is the more expensive DLC. This is supposed to be the bigger one. Mm -hmm. And there are some interesting things, like all the archers that get uh, summoned there. Um, but, like, this boss looks a lot like 16 other Soulsborne yeah. bosses so that like I fought. Bat Dragon, Heavy Metal God? Thing. I don't know. I'm going to get back to people, but I said it to you before. I might be nearing the end of my... my I might be nearing the end of, of giving the Souls franchise a pass. Mm -hmm. The love affair love is over? So Are you, you past the honeymoon stage? I'm at that point where I'm willing to criticize. Like, <laughs> Dark Souls might have let itself go a little bit here. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. No, no. That's not good. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I mean, I'm still going to play it. I mean, you know, I'm not, yeah. not going to play it. I mean, looking at the trailer, everything is really beautifully designed. So Yeah, it more just has to do with the fact that once you... Like, this is the third 40-hour Dark yeah. Souls game you know, and then there's also Demon Souls and Bloodborne. I played through all of them, and I think that it also can just be the sort of thing where it's like this is. I mean, if you want to count those other games, the final DLC of the fifth game in this kind of universe, yeah. And four of those games were made by the same dude, so I'm sure that Miyazaki's just like, bitch, I I made this game like three times already. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't know. Bring on whatever's next. No more Bloodborne. No more Dark Souls. Let's get some new shit in here. It's 2017. Let's get some new blood. Agreed. Um, but I'll tell you what is some new blood is uh, this crazy trailer that came out for this game called Greedfall. Um, it's got a moose monster. It does have a moose monster. It's got some like soulful singing. Yeah. And a moose monster. And I first off, there is one thing. If you guys go out and watch this trailer. The trailer starts with like this lady looks like a, like a forest nymph or something like running through the forest fast as she can. There's like a guy yeah. walking behind her with a gun, um, and she's like so far ahead. And then this guy like loads his gun. It's and he's a fucking walking. musket. It's not even like a good gun. Yeah. It's like straight up but, old but, school. But is it just me? But when he goes to fire, and suddenly she's only like <laughs> like sixteen feet in front of him. I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe did she stop to take a break? She's like, "Woo, I got to tie my shoe." Yeah, like mid run. Um, but yeah, he's some dude in a tricorn hat with a musket. He's shooting up forest ladies, and 
Then there's a big old moose monster. I'm real confused that you think that's a girl because I'm pretty sure it's a boy. Is that a dude? I thought it was like a teenage boy. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the effeminate features. It's maybe a, I've it's been a... watching too much anime because that looks like a dude to me. Okay, maybe it is a dude. It's a wood. It's got luscious lips, though. I don't know. I, maybe. Just because you're attracted to it doesn't mean it's <laughs> not a dude. Damn it! <laughs> Greedfall, quit making me question my sexuality. <laughs> um, but yeah, a giant moose, moose crazy monster comes up. This actually looks an awful lot like Bloodborne, and this is a spiders developed focus uh, interactive published game it's gonna be an rpg on the xbox one and you know what this company doesn't always make the best games Mm -hmm. but i always like to point them out as saying at least what they're doing looks different than like i I feel like we've finally gotten to a place where if you want like if you want me to get excited about your game you have to make a trailer like this that is super well produced and slick and is like ooh, what is that i want to play it yeah it's definitely intriguing and i yeah like it has that like weird final scene that kind of catches you too yeah Uh, it's hard to tell it's gonna be an rpg and they make it sound like it might be multiplayer but then it's like on this continent where people come to hunt monsters or something and i'm just like oh great could be good um i mean this at least looks good and the i mean the graphical quality i feel like this is like a mid-tier european developer Mm -hmm. and like this is a good-looking trailer. Yeah, like it looks all the really good. Yeah. Lighting engine, character design, everything looks really good. I feel like if it was an animation or a movie, I'd be really interested in watching it. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up, we've got a trailer for Stories Untold. Uh, now, normally, I, I would be a little bit concerned about this. Um, first off, because, God, my God, this trailer only has 5,000 views. Fucking rage select videos have five thousand views. Come wow. on, video game company, <laughs> get good news. <laughs> this is Devolver Digital. They're like they're a good company. This is Stories Untold, which is apparently going to be um, a game where you're playing like an old eighties uh, like TV horror game, but then it's like you're playing it inside of this area, mm-hmm. inside of this house that changes based on things. And this this game that's on the screen. Um, uh, what's it called? The Abandon, uh, the, uh, house. the House Abandon. Yeah. Uh, is actually, you can already play this, and it's kind of similar to what this actually is. It's like you're playing it inside of a house. It's free. Uh-huh. I feel like we should check it out at some point. Yeah. Uh, but this trailer is so, like, doing that Stranger Things 80s nostalgia. Yeah, I mean, it's like John Carpenter did the soundtrack, yep. and the, yeah, it's very The Stranger font, things. it's like they went to dafont.com, and they were like, <laughs> 80s horror movie. <laughs> uh, I, oddly enough, though, I mean, you don't really get a lot from the trailer. It kind of turns me off. I feel like everyone's doing the same thing right now. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I get it. I get it. The 80s was neat or whatever, but it's, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting the same thing over and over. Like, you, we t- were talking about doing something new, and I feel like giving me, at least the trailer didn't show me anything. So it basically just gave me, you like the 80s, right? Right. And you like <laughs> 80s music, right? Right. And you like 80s fonts. Right. <laughs> then you're going to love this game. And it's like, that's not going to sell me on anything. I See, I would agree with you except for the one thing down here, which is the the publisher of this game. I really like them. And so I'm usually willing to give their games the stuff they put out, the benefit of the doubt. Kind of like Focus right. Interactive. But if you're somebody like me who doesn't focus on uh, the who's making it, yeah. then how are you supposed to sell me? No, that's true. Well, I I feel like it's just not for you, right? Is that it's for but everybody. But this game might be for me. But the problem is that if you're just banking solely on a trailer that looks like fucking Stranger Things or pulls that same nostalgia factor as Stranger Things, that's not going to sell anything to me. You have to actually show me a game I want to watch. Is there like a flash or something right before you get to the words yeah uh something is it like a monster face or something uh it's just like some schmutz on the screen it's like a light bulb that's going on a lot and and no i mean like oh oh yeah i see there's yeah no there's one frame frame of something i can't do one frame uh Uh, it just looks like some uh, garbage and crap Uh oh it's an eyeball there's an eyeball right there right um anyway i don't know um We'll probably check it out. That was more interesting than anything else was that they (laughs) snuck in a frame of something else. Yep. Um, All right. So I assume that you're listening to this podcast because you like video games. And if you like video games, this year E3 has gone back to selling tickets. So if you want to go to E3 but you're not a journalist, you can buy yourself a ticket. No more having to lie about where you work to try to get in. (laughs) That's true. Uh, they're going to be selling um, $150. Let's see. Early birds paying $150. Uh, 
uh, per ticket, and then the regular price is two fifty. Fuck that. Um, here's the thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna say to people that if you are thinking about doing this, you need to be cool waiting in line for literally three hours at a time. Yeah. Because the um, problem with E three when you don't have press credentials is that nobody like you're just waiting in lines. Yeah. And because the demonstrations take like twenty or thirty minutes, you're talking about rotating like ten or fifteen people into a conference room for twenty or thirty minutes and then the next group goes in. So if there's, you know, a long line in front of you, you're gonna get you're gonna spend your entire day standing in line. Yeah. Which sucks. Yeah, so like enjoy spending two hundred and fifty dollars to see three things at best. Also, well I you know, I'm also trying to make a case against E3 going to E3 because I'm trying to make a case against $250. Well, I would assume yes, but the the other thing is that I don't know how it has been the last 3 years cuz we only went that one time. Mm-hmm. Uh but the time that we went the on year 1 of Rage Select, yeah. like roughly two thirds of the demos that we saw were hands off when you couldn't even play them. And the stuff that you could play was coming out in the next four months anyway. Yeah. So anything that was like in the distance was a developer walkthrough, which uh, you can watch footage of that on YouTube and Twitch and shit. Yeah. Like during E3. Yeah. It's all happening like right there. Right. Everyone has their streams going. Yeah. Just, you know, all I'm saying is that if you're considering dropping 250 on a... uh, Spend 250 on getting, uh, what is it, Google Fiber so that you can stream it nicer. You you know what you can get for $250 this month? A bunch of naked chicken (laughs) slovas. A PlayStation 4. They've oh. dropped the price to two fifty for like a week or two in February. Wow. So yeah. Well, there you go. And it's do a bundle that. with Uncharted Four or Infinite Warfare. Like Do that. Yeah, do that instead. Yeah. Speaking of the PlayStation 4, uh, there's an update coming for the PS4 that's going to add a few things. This isn't really huge news. It's just nice to see that PlayStation is is actually actively adding things. Uh, The biggest thing that is actually already on the Xbox One, I believe, is that you can now hook up an external hard drive uh, to put games on, to download games to, and run games off of. Nice. That's cool. USB 3.0 up to 8 terabytes, uh, and you can take it other places, you know, do whatever, which is nice because I know I don't really mind re-downloading stuff, but I know a lot of people with um, internet that isn't super fast. You don't want to have to download a thing over and over and over yeah. again. So that's nice. They're also adding a few other things like the ability to alter the little quick screen a little bit. They're adding support for uh, 3D Blu-rays if you have a PlayStation VR, which is actually really cool because I've watched 3D movies in VR before and because it's in VR, yeah. you can make the screen as big as you want and the 3D is crystal clear because it's got control of your eyes because yeah. VR is 3D. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you're looking for a reason to spend that $250 on a PlayStation, boy, this is an ad for fucking PlayStation. Yeah, I was, uh, I was just going to sit here and let that happen. Let you get that fat PlayStation check. Nobody's sending me (laughs) checks. Nobody. Um, so yeah. Speaking of people who aren't selling me checks. Nope. I'm not doing that one. Speaking of Netflix shows on Netflix, (laughs) like Stranger Things, uh, apparently, uh, buried deep within, uh, some of the Netflix announcements that have been coming out is that there's going to be a Castlevania Netflix series. I am so down. I was so down when I heard about this. Yeah. I didn't even, I haven't even played Castlevania and I'm like, <laughs> Netflix is going to do a real good fucking Castlevania show. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that somebody is because Konami sure as fuck isn't doing anything Castlevania related. Well, maybe the success of this will um, inspire a new game. No, I doubt it. Konami would inspire a... Uh, what's it called? Where they like just fix it up and bring it out? Oh, for remaster! It. Yeah, remaster. That's Can, the word. Konami, like a year and a half ago, or uh, like a year ago, Konami like announced, "Hey, we're not making video games anymore. We're just going to focus on the health clubs that we own in Japan because that's where we're getting most of our money." And it was just like, I mean, it's a smart business tactic. But why don't they just sell the rights to those to other people that perhaps <laughs> love those video games? They're greedy sons of bitches. They're greedy. What? Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, they're super greedy. Their greed should no. fall, like greed fall with the <laughs> moose monster. Like the last time that they made a, a Castlevania game, I believe was uh, a pachinko game. <laughs> like a Castlevania. How was it? Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> fucking play pachinko. <laughs> Castlevania, Metal Gear, and uh, Silent Hill all have like these super fancy, and they even like re-rendered like parts of Metal Gear Solid Three in the like new engine. Yeah. And make all these fresh new graphics to put on the screens of the pachinko machines and we're just like fuck you konami yeah, that's just yeah. fuck your pachinko. like pissing in your mouth is what <laughs> konami's doing 
<laughs> Gargle noise. Um, uh, so apparently there's going to be a Castlevania season one. It's supposed to be kind of Game of Thrones-ish. It's going to be based on Castlevania three, which makes sense because it means you've got Al- Alucard and you've got uh, Grant the Thief and you've got uh, uh, Sylph the Wizard Lady as well as Trevor Belmont, I think. Also, if there is not an episode where they have to climb up a giant clock tower and jump on a bunch of gears, mm-hmm. worst show I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Hasn't even come it, out yet. Just saying. that's If you're going to make it about Castlevania 3, we all remember dying horribly. Mm-hmm. There's got to be some Medusa heads. There's got to be some f- creatures from the Black Lagoon. And it's got to have like it's got to have like an '80s flair to it. It's got to feel like Stranger Things. Oh, like, yeah, exactly like Stranger Things. And also, if after beating the boss, um, the whoever's playing the lead Belmont doesn't get hit in the face with a bat and then fall off the edge of a cliff <laughs> and die, and then have to start the whole show over again, that'd be great. Fuck you. Uh, but apparently, um, it's going to be produced by Fredder Fredderator Networks, which uh, produced Adventure Time. And then yeah. apparently, is it an animation? I uh, I don't think so. Isn't it Frederator like cartoon Frederator like the yeah they do uh, like bravest warriors and stuff maybe. like that. Maybe, but then it's also supposed to be like cartoon domination. Uh, Addie Shankar is supposed to be attached to it. Which, if you guys forgot, that's the guy that did the super dark like Power Rangers thing that was on YouTube. Oh yeah, that I didn't like. Yeah. I don't know. But then also, um, there's a rumor that Warren Ellis is writing it. And I'm down with Warren Ellis, writer of Transmetropolitan, as well as other things. Yeah, there's not a lot that's telling me it's going to be bad. Yep. It's, I have a lot of faith in Netflix shows, so. There's just too goddamn I'm many. Down. Oh, just as a quick side note, because we're almost out of time. Oh, God. Is, uh, uh, I watched that Santa Clarita diet show last week. Oh, what'd you think? Not worth your time. Fuck it. Oh, good. Yeah. Because the trailers look like shit, and yep. I was intrigued, and I loved uh, Drew Barrymore, and yep. I was like, nah, it doesn't look like Every everything. episode's the same. It's uh, also the whole season ends on a cliffhanger, and fuck you. Like, what? Yeah. Is that it? Fuck nah. off. No, you know what you should watch? The Get Down. The Get Down? Yeah. It's it fucking great. It's about uh, the history of hip-hop. Okay, yeah. And Baz Luhrmann directed it, so it's done like a musical without necessarily being a musical. I'm um, out. Oh. No uh, Baz Luhrmann in my life. <laughs> okay. So, well, I, see, I'm a diehard Baz Luhrmann, so like, yeah. it's, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. like to listen to him talk about sunscreen. That's where I draw the line. Is That's, after- I don't even know what you're talking about as far as I was concerned. But uh, <laughs> if, if you like Baz Luhrmann, watch it, and you like hip-hop, watch it. Okay. Uh, last but not least... I am a. I, I, some may call me a YouTuber, that, or may call no one, me. No one calls you. That. Nobody calls me a YouTuber, <laughs> but uh, I am. Um, I am. So this is a little motherfucker on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, so this is son of a bitch. This is this son of a bitch who's recording. Holy shit! The quality of that video is nice. He's, he's recording like with a, like a sixty frames per second camera or something because uh-huh. it's like sixty fps. This guy is lined up at the Nintendo store in New York one month ahead of time for Nintendo Switch, and he's going to be standing in line all month and doing like where's he going to pee? Fucking YouTube videos. I don't know. Does he have a catheter? I don't know. Do you think maybe he like? Put I couldn't it in the watch the video. But what I wanted to do was express a little bit of dismay at the fact that this video has a fucking 170,000 views, which is like roughly half of a year worth of Rage Select videos all put together. Yeah. From just some... I mean, but like a panda sneezing has more, no offense to Rage Select, <laughs> <laughs> that because it came off more insulting than I realized. No, no, no. But you no, know what I mean? Like no, no. sometimes there's some bullshit that has a bunch of views for some reason. That panda deserves those hits. <laughs> That band is fucking adorable. That band is a fucking adorable. But this guy, and he's got like this other guy, Triforce Jones or something, who was like the guy, the last guy whose record he's breaking. Who like Triforce w- Jones is an amazing name, and he also wears a power glove. Um, his yeah, his name's Triforce Jones. Anyway, is that well, he, what does the power glove have to do with the Triforce? It's so bad. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I hope the employees at the Nintendo store are like, this fucking This kid. fucking guy. Because he's like live streaming and doing updates. And uh, I don't know. This guy's got a YouTube video that's just way, or a YouTube channel, I believe, that's just way the fuck bigger than mine anyway. I mean, there's so. a lot of people that do that. Yeah. Though. Like, there's, they just are super popular. you never heard of them before. And they have millions of subscribers. Like, what? Yeah, actually, okay. when I look at this guy's videos, like the the videos that he has that have the least number of hits over the last couple of weeks have been are like fourteen thousand hits. So never mind. This guy's just bigger than me, and 
but I wish I had enough fucking YouTube money to well, go maybe you stand in line. Stand in line, and and we can do like a live stream where we just Jeff we has just... to or eat while he's here. So you guys have to like send money. We're gonna go to New York, and we're gonna stand right behind him. <laughs> I'm just gonna line up behind him and be like. Fuck you. Fuck you. Can you Fuck stand you. awkwardly Fuck close you. to him? Fuck. Like, oh, yeah. No. Like, no, I'm going to get a bag. I'm going to fill it with naked chalupas. <laughs> I'm going to stand really close to him, and I'm going to eat him right up next to his ear. Just <laughs> nom, 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 You're noises. not even enjoying it. You're literally nope. like, oh, they're getting cold. Oh, like, they're, they're so awful. terrible. And yeah. like, keep eating them in front of him. I, f- I feel like I might shit my pants. I've eaten so many. <laughs> I better eat another one. I don't know what's going to happen. The Nintendo guys won't even let me in the store anymore. <laughs> That's going to be one of those horrible YouTube like story time. I got harassed waiting in line for a Nintendo Switch. Damn right. All right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment with a few questions. So everybody stay tuned and we'll see you in uh, just a minute. And we're back. What happened? Yeah, time for questions. Mail at RageSuck.com is the email address to send your questions into. And our first question this week comes in from Alicia, Alicia, Alicia who says, Greetings and salutations, Jeff and wonderful and honorable co-host Amanda. First time writing in asking questions. I heard you needed a few more. A few weeks ago, there was an announcement for Werewolf the Apocalypse of World of Darkness uh, Vampire the Masquerade fame. That really went under the radar. Uh, this disappoints me because this is a tabletop game franchise I really, really enjoy, actually. I would call it my favorite thing ever. At the same time, I understand the lack of coverage because the developer Sinai doesn't have a lot of uh, notable games under their belt. Just the original Styx game, the Game of Thrones game, the upcoming Call of Cthulhu. Still, I'm tied to this dormant franchise will get a new video game, even if it turns out bad or mediocre. So here are my questions. Have you ever been excited for a game based off of a property you liked, even if the developer's pedigree wasn't very good? Have you ever heard of White Wolf's tabletop games? If so, what are your thoughts on them? Exalted, World of Darkness, Chronicles Darkness, etc. Would you rather have one of your favorite IPs remain dormant forever or have a new mediocre game or even bad game released on that IP? Also, thanks for bringing back the intros and outros. For your videos, Yakuza 0 and Resident Evil will have me squirting milk through my nose. Keep the great work. Long-time fan, first-time Patreon, Alesha. So, Alesha's... Really kind of... She drinks too much milk. She's also... <laughs> she's like squirting through her nose every other video. Unless you're also kind of abusing the question system a little bit. We usually answer one question per person. Um, yeah, throw me one of them because I... I haven't, a I haven't played White Wolf's tabletop games. I mean, I know of Vampire the Masquerade, but I've never actually played it. Yeah, um, I know of it, but I haven't played any of them, um, unfortunately. So let's try the other two. Have you ever been excited for a game being based off a property you liked, even if the developer's pedigree wasn't very good? I'm, That's an interesting question. Uh, I feel like there. No, I mean probably, but nothing of like big note where I'm like. I feel like every time a new Shadowrun or Warhammer 40k game comes out, yeah. the, those a lot of times have been farmed out to developers that I think are kind of. But um, especially Warhammer 40K recently has just been letting any old jackass make a Warhammer game, regardless of well, whatever. Well, you're a jackass. Why don't you make a Warhammer game? <laughs> I have a show <laughs> to do, all right? I could make a Warhammer game if I had money and a Kickstarter and, you know, any experience making video games. Um <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything else. I mean, I feel like the thing that would be that would most fit into this category would be movie licensed games. Yeah, uh, but I'm never excited about movie licensed games. The Wanted game was kind of interesting, even though it came really? out like a well, it was like it was a shooting game that actually where the developer actually tried to put in like a bullet Bending. curving mechanic. Yeah. So it's like a cover based shooter, but you could get around the other people's cover by doing this kind of like slow motion Max Payne sniper elite style like curving thing with yeah, the bullet. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, it wasn't a very good game. But. Yeah, I feel like like it's a good idea in theory, and then when you actually do it in practice, that doesn't sound like it'd be very fun. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of... I've, I've, I've never really played a lot of the old tie-in games. Um, I think there was a G.I. Joe game that came out in conjunction with the movie. Oh, you know what? I was actually... Um, I was kind of excited, and I never got a chance to play it, but wasn't there a like a Kinect... Pacific Rim game where you were like swinging your arms around or was doing there? some shit. I don't remember. I, f- I feel like I would have been excited about that, but I don't remember it. But it was a Connect game. I could be excited about a Connect game. I was really excited when you guys played the Star Wars Connect game. Yeah. Yeah. I met somebody tonight that actually worked on that game. Oh man, did they seem <laughs> real depressed? No, I asked them the question. I always have the same question whenever 
or actually, I really want. I like. I want to write. Okay, so I mean, this is a brief tangent. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so everybody remember Star Wars Connect from when we played it back on Spill in the old days, right? Yes. Uh, there is that song, that Han Solo song. Uh, that's Jason Derulo, mm-hmm. and he does this Han Solo song, um, and it was it was a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Near as I can tell from the timeline. Like, two years before that, MC Chris made a song called mm-hmm. Han Solo that sounds almost identical mm-hmm. to the Jason Derulo song. And it was like MC Chris, like, kind of in the style of Jason Derulo right. making this Han Solo song. And then in the Star Wars Connect game, it's, like, almost the same song, but now it is Jason Derulo. Yeah. I'm like, is Jason Derulo, like, giving MC Chris a sideways middle finger in the Star <laughs> Wars Connect? Like, does, does Jason Derulo think a lot about MC Chris and not like him? Or... Did, Maybe. Did they just rip off MC Chris? Like, what is the story there? Does anybody know? I'm honestly, I want to an answer that question. If you know, please write it in, in the comments. Let me know. Um, so the other question was, would you rather have one of your favorite IPs remain dormant forever or have a new mediocre game or even bad game released on that IP? Dormant forever. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a big, like, I'd rather something end good, even on a cliffhanger, end good. Yeah. Then have it go for too long where you're just getting the same like TV shows. I hate that where yep. it's like, oh, either you're going to see two seasons of a really great show or 20 seasons of bullshit that's been completely ruined by them just running out of ideas. And now you're just getting the same shit over and over well, again. But, but this question was an IP laying dormant. Yeah. Or, if, it, if it's already out, like if it's already something that's dormant. Would you, I mean, like, let's say, would you... I would you... be excited if they were like, oh, hey, it's the a new Brutal Legend game, because that's, like, a big... Right. That's one of my favorite games. I'd be excited. And then if it's bad, I'd be like, I, f- I, I mean, it's not like, oh, I ruined the franchise. Yeah. But I also wouldn't feel, like, I don't feel like I'm missing something for them not having another one come out. See, I, I always, I kind of go on the side of... I think I'd rather have there be bad games based on franchises that I like than no games because if there's bad games, there's still the possibility that they might like make a good one eventually if people keep making games in that franchise. Batman, for example, has had tons of shit ass games, yeah. right? But if Batman as a as a gaming franchise was just put down, then we never probably would have seen eventually Rocksteady pick it up and make Arkham Asylum, which turned out to be an incredibly good game. So I'd rather there be crappier games out there because at least But they the question keep... straight up says that it'd be mediocre or a bad game. Yeah. No, that's that's fine. But as long as the franchise, so that's what is you're active, guaranteeing that if you're saying yes, you're going to get a mediocre or bad game. You know what? Also, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> opposed to mediocre to 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 games that have that aren't the greatest AAA game of all time. I mean, Focus and Spiders, mean, like they put out kind of mid tier right. games with problems. Right. I mean, I guess it's just the difference between like I'm in my head. I'm thinking like. Uh, if you come out with a Call of Duty game every year, you're never going to get anything new or anything special. True. And sometimes it's better to have one really good game than just Call of Duty over and over again. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, all right. The next one comes in from Thomas, and Thomas says, Hi, Jeff and Marvelous Amanda. Hail the dong. Uh, I'm really enjoying the short and snappy podcast. It makes Jeff, and if it makes Jeff's life easier as well, that's a bonus. It really does. Plus, the three questions per podcast means the only the strongest questions make the cut. Hopefully, this one will make the team slash cut. Nope. Next. Keep no. the good work. <laughs> Uh, I recently watched Natural Born Killers for the first time on Netflix. Nice. I didn't see what all the fuss was about. Uh, sure, it may well have been a product of its time, but I found the overall themes it was trying to get across of TV being bad and violence in the youth very laughable. Truth be told, it was a bit of a letdown, and I had no empathy for any of the characters in the thing, similarly to how John felt about Trevor in Dr- Grand Theft Auto V. Mm-hmm. My question is this. Can you recall a franchise which has been hyped up for you but was ultimately a massive letdown? Why was it so disappointing for you? And did it have any redeeming factors where you could see what all the fuss was about for other people. All the best. Take care, Thomas. Uh, Breaking Bad. I oh. know it's not like a... I imagine this was supposed to be a video game question, but uh, Breaking Bad, I watched the entire first season and was like, why? Yeah. Uh, 
I, I find the first season of Breaking Bad to be fairly intolerable, personally. Right, and like, I'm just not somebody that is willing to do the, well, you just have to yep. suffer through 24 episodes. I mean, it's like 12 episodes or whatever it was, but, you know, you just have to suffer through, like, a large chunk of your life before you get to the good stuff. And it's like, I could just watch something that starts good and keeps being good. Yeah, or even something that starts good and then gets bad and I could stop watching it. Right, exactly. Instead of, yeah. Supernatural. Um. Sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. You're going to get a lot of hate over that. But like after five seasons, I can't just keep watching. Uh, but you know what? Actually, um, I, I've got to throw a monkey wrench in that because I'm always I always have to remember every time I get up on my my fucking high horse about this. I have to remember the first season one, two and maybe even three of TNG can get real boring for long stretches like yeah especially and even like deep space nine which i fucking love like it takes a while for that shit to like get going i'll go with you on this one um kind of uh babylon five yeah that whole first season is boring it's dry it's like reading a fucking dictionary of boring dry (laughs) boringness i can't (laughs) express it's it's all politics it's space politics yeah. but when you get to the other seasons because you sat through all of this world building yeah. you understand the politics of different races mm-hmm. by the end of it it's, and it's so why, when you get into it and then the, like somebody's like we have to do this treaty and you're like oh they can't do the treaty there's a full moon out and you're like what and it's like no because the people are like and the moon affects how they are and it's like a huge thing but like it's I don't know. You get into it because of a weird thing, and yeah. we're totally off of whatever that question is. No, no, it's fine. Um, I was also going to say we'll get back to the question in a second, but I was also going to say um, Natural Born Killers is absolutely a product of its time. Like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. If you didn't watch it before, I mean, like I even feel some other stuff. Like I, I wonder how well, maybe maybe better now now that we're in such weird times. But like you know, kind of the some of the some of the salad days i start to wonder how well fight club holds up over time because fight club is also like weird and political and like i bet if you watch fight club now you'd be like oh it's like watching a youtube comment section <laughs> cuz they're real like better than you kind of shitty people yeah yeah like, pretentious assholes um but yeah i mean yeah, that's just that. Anyway, the question was, can you recall a franchise which has been hyped up for you but ultimately, was ultimately a massive letdown? Why was it so disappointing for you, and did it have any redeeming factors? Uh, I'll tell you, the, the, the thing that happens more often than not for me is when people get real pushy with me about anything, yeah. I instant, there's only two reactions that I have. Either one, it gets built up so much that when I watch it, even though it's not bad, it's a letdown because people wouldn't shut up about how good it was. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons why I've, like, backed off of a bunch of franchises and I will go back to them someday, like The Walking Dead. Yeah. I don't want to watch The Walking Dead because people have made it – people are all or mad men or things like that. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing that happens to me a lot is when people push – properties on me and you push back you're like fuck that property and i'm just like yeah fuck off yeah. Uh, oh, I don't, man. I don't nothing care. ruins a franchise more than the fandoms yeah fandoms are fucking awful um yeah i mean uh, no offense to the rich like fandom uh you guys are great you guys <laughs> different totally different situation not the same different thing. different scenario i mean i've said it for a while like the the um i don't i have no interest in watching steven universe uh, after watching the way that's the- so funny because I was just waiting for Hulu to be turned back on. It got turned off for us, and because uh, I was going to start marathoning through Steven Universe. Yeah, and and I'm sure it's a good show, but like the fandom for that show, like I just read all these like Tumblr horror stories, and I'm just like, oh, gross. Like, I why don't are want- you on Tumblr? I'm not. Get off of Tumblr. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm reading stories from other websites yeah. about horror, about like. Some girl drew this one character on Steven Universe, but didn't draw her as fat as she is on Steven Universe. And so Tumblr is now like, kill yourself, Becky.tumblr.com. Becky's a fat fucking slut. Kill yourself, Becky.tumblr. And I'm just like, I don't want any part of this. Yeah. This is just gross. I don't want any part of this. It reminds me of the creator, uh, Jonan Vasquez, for or, uh, Invader Zim. Oh, and yeah. And how he straight up hated Invader Zim because his fans were just dicks about everything. Yeah. The same, I mean, like, I don't know. It's in a slightly different way. I tried watching Adventure Time and just didn't, it didn't click with me. Mm-hmm. 
And, the, the, you know, the problem, Thomas, is not necessarily that people like a thing. It's that there's a certain brand of people that like a thing that can't stand that you don't like a thing. Mm-hmm. So if you've watched it and you don't like it, they will argue with you about why it's good, even though that's never worked ever. Yeah. And if you haven't watched it, they will not leave you the fuck alone until, until you, you watch, watch it. it. And now it's not enjoyable because it feels like fucking homework. Right. Because you're only watching it to shut them up. Yeah. You didn't come to it on your own. Or you could be like John. Has he mentioned the Children of Men story here? Oh, yes. He okay. has. Because that's my favorite story that John has told of his vindictive. It's in our house. <laughs> Still rap. I like that movie. I can't watch that movie because John won't watch that fucking movie. He doesn't even talk to the guy that recommended watching children of men but heaven forbid we watch that movie because one person bothered him about watching it yeah uh so i don't know there have been there have been other stuff i mean i don't know everything gets too hyped up nowadays where you're just like "Eh." and 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 the internet especially is such a binary system of you either have to hate it or love it you can't even be middle of it where you're like oh yeah i saw it it was all right and they're like no you don't understand it's fucking the best thing that ever came out yep Yep. yeah that happens all the time Speaking of which, uh, I got to see John Wick 2. It's the best thing of all time. Uh, is it, dude? I want to watch it so bad. It's really good. I don't want to overhype it. It's good. You should probably see it. Did you like John Wick 1? Then you'll like John Wick 2. I think the first one's a little bit stronger <gasps> because it's a very... Because... I've heard some... I've heard back and forth. Like, some people are saying John Wick 2 is better. Some people are saying the first one's better. I, I think the John Wick 1 was a very simple story. Mm-hmm. It's a It's a guy going on revenge. You killed my dog. You took my car. I'm going to kill everybody and take revenge. Mm-hmm. Um, well... He, t- he took a revenge. Yeah. So the second story is not going to be that cut and dry. So it's a little bit more esoteric. And what I'll say is that if the stuff in the first movie, all that esoteric, like the coins in the hotel and yeah. all that stuff, if that stuff wasn't interesting to you, then you may not like John Wick 2 as much as John Wick 1. But if you did like that I'm stuff. I'm down for that stuff. Then you're going to like John Wick 2. Uh, it's great. It was nice. Fucking fantastic. So I was waiting for you to give me your review of 50 shades of darker the sequel <laughs> to 50 shades of gray. Cause I was certain that's what you went to go see. No, never. <laughs> when it co- no, when it comes out on VOD, I will totally watch it. <laughs> Katie J writes in and says, Dear Wild and Wonderful Rage Select hosts, I'm playing Splinter Cell Conviction for the who knows how many time. I adore this game. It powers down Sam Fisher and has a wonderful, engaging story that makes you invested in Sam's life even when you've never played a Splinter Cell game before. Upon this playthrough, I forgot how cool the interrogation minigames are. Sam smashes people's faces into sinks, pianos, and all sorts of stuff to get Third Echelon to leave him the hell alone, only then to discover the death of his daughter was not what it, was, was not what it seemed. My bah, question... Bah, bah. Is a bit of a two-parter, if that's okay. One, apart from having a new protagonist, what would you want in a new Splinter Cell game? And two, what are some of the best interrogations, for whatever reason, in games you have played? L.A. Noir has the best interrogations. <laughs> Thanks for answering my question. Your loyal patron, Katie J. Yeah, where it's like, I don't believe you, ma'am. Yeah. Like, Fuck you, <laughs> copper. I told you everything. I like, they're like, I don't know where they found the body. And it's like, <laughs> why are you talking like that? <laughs> Um, what I don't, do you want I, to see in a new Splinter Cell game? I've never seen. I've Apart never, from having a new protagonist? God damn it. Uh, <laughs> damn it. What would you want in a new Splinter Cell game? I'll tell you what I want out of a new Splinter Cell game is the same thing that I'm glad that they did in 24, which is a new protagonist. Um, because I thought look, he said you can't say new protagonist. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. That's literally the <laughs> exact. Yeah, and you read it and went, damn it, and then answered it the same way anyway. Okay, fine. <laughs> um... What do I want out of a new Splinter Cell game? A new protagonist? A new pro- <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, I tell you what I'd like is is something that was a little bit like Hitman, where it's kind of an open world, a little bit more of an open world thing, and give uh, whoever the protagonist is a little bit more leeway Hopefully to do things new. different <laughs> ways. Um, yes. is, I, I haven't played a Splinter Cell game. Oh, they're so good. Ever. Um, Michael Ironside. Are they super linear? Uh, they're... No, they're not. They're not. There are different ways through the different levels. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I've, I've, I, I look at Hitman and I just really like that structure as a shooting people game. Like I, after seeing John Wick 2, I was like, I wish there was like a John Wick 2 mod for Hitman because it's kind of like the same thing. He's like walking around and you put, man, if he had the John Wick suit and like the facial hair or whatever, yeah. then you just blah, blah, and shoot And a people. dog that lives throughout the entire movie, right? Yeah. The dog lives throughout the entire movie. I don't know. I can't answer those movie. questions. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I liked the depowered Sam Fisher. I'd like to see him get away from third echelon again because every time that they do that, they did that for the first three games, and then they went away from it, and then they came back to it. And I like it better when Sam Fisher is kind of out there because in Splinter Cell Conviction, it's like he's out, and then it's like people come for him. Mm -hmm. And so, like, in the first level, he doesn't have any gadgets, so he's using, like, a he breaks a mirror off of a car to, like, look around corners, and, like, he's looking through keyholes. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so I kind of the low-tech thing because Splinter Cell had always been, like, you know, the the three things, and he's, like, hanging from the ceiling, and it's, like, I kind of like the down and dirty kind of um, Jack Bauer uh, Jason Bourne style yeah, running like around. Yeah, like a gritty doing what you can to get stuff done right. kind of thing as opposed to like having all the technology available. I want to see Sam Fisher roll up a newspaper and beat somebody to death with it. Yeah. <laughs> or, I uh, think we, we could really use more just magazine beating to death. Yeah. That doesn't happen as often as I want. No. Um, the Modern Rogue taught me though you can make a you can make a hell of a weapon out of a magazine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Why did they teach that? That's a weird thing to t- like. Hey, did you want to beat the shit out of somebody? You know what my favorite thing about the Modern Rogue is is if you watch the Modern Rogue, it tends to it tends to switch between a few different things. Yeah. Like week one is we're gonna do some kind of like here's a crazy internet thing, number stations, or like yeah. how to start your own pirate radio station or whatever. So that's like the control group where you're, where where this is just like some internet fucking around things and then like other weeks they're teaching you how to like either make a deadly weapon Mm -hmm. out of out of newspaper yeah or make like body armor out of newspaper or make like a gun out of a newspaper (laughs) yes or or, yeah whatever yeah yeah. they're trying to murder there's some kind of weird and then the third week Uh is either trevor the bartender or like how to make like prison wine it's it's like how to get drunk how to fight and then how to put that on the internet how to make a pirate radio station to talk about that time that you made a spear out of a magazine and got wasted on prison wine and they teach you how to go on the deep web so you can start a site (laughs) about killing people People, and you could use paper as your murder weapon yeah. because you could light it on fire. Then there's no murder weapon. They can't find it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, as far as what are some of the best <laughs> interrogations in games? Oh, man. Uh, I just put that all together in my head that I'm just like, yeah, the modern rogue. Get drunk. Stab people with a newspaper. <laughs> is that not what their slogan is? I don't think so. Um Let's see. Interrogations in a video game. Uh, I feel like Mass Effect has some good stuff with all that renegade stuff that you can do. Yeah, like I definitely enjoyed that. Uh, especially... Is that really an interrogation, though? Uh, not really. But, I mean, as far as, like, formal interrogation goes, all I can really think of is Trevor torturing the guy in Grand Theft Auto V, which was weird. Uh, you probably I, yeah mm-mm, lost me on that one. I'm not a Grand one. Theft Auto fan. Oh, that goes back to franchises I don't. Uh, yeah, people hype, and I'm like, ah. Eh. Well, there's a part where, like a, uh, like an their version of the FBI, like gang presses Trevor into trying to get information about this target from this guy, and mm-hmm. so they basically give you like a waterboard and like uh, a drill and like like pliers to rip the guy's teeth Jesus. out. Jesus. And then, like after all that's done, Trevor has to drive him to the airport, and Trevor starts going off on this weird rant about how like you can't let the government do stuff like this to you, man. I'm gonna get the word out to everybody. <laughs> it's just like what? That's weird. Um, but yeah, I'd kind of forgotten about the interrogations in that game as well. I think there needs to be a lot more getting information from people by slamming their face into a urinal and then the urinal breaks. I think that's a good I feel like that's use of urinal. Murder? That's not good. You're not going to get a lot of good intel from that. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of urinal breaking in movies and such. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it happens, but I just feel like in actuality, you'd probably be murdering somebody. Well, sure, yeah. but. Anyway, our last question this week comes in from B Hammer 100, who says, "Hello, Jeff and Amanda. Hope you guys are doing good." And yada yada yada. Praise the Dong Lord. I saw that Hitman was now released as a complete collection, gathering together all the previously episodic missions into one package. But what caught my eye was the title of the collection: Hitman: The Complete First Season. What do you think of this trend of video games becoming more TV-like? Video games being broken up episodically and having seasons. Do you think more video games will do this in the future? Is there anything you would like to see episodically released video games do differently? B Hammer 100. I'm um, not against it as long as it feels like a full game. Like, I don't want them to waste your money by not giving you, like... A full game. Yeah, it's like one of those uh, one of those pilots that never gets picked up, and you're just like, "What the fuck, man?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Every game is like the Firefly of yeah. video games. Uh, actually, who was it? I was watching. Uh, oh, it was actually Cracked had a video uh, that was talking about like um, why it it was it. <laughs> fucking cracked in their clickbait titles i actually like some of the stuff that crack does but like this was called like why all modern movies are terrible yeah and um one of the things that they noted which um i i i'm sure that one part of my brain knew this but hadn't put it together was that every fucking movie franchise is trying to build a, a continuity in a universe now mm -hmm. so a lot of the bigger movies that you see don't feel like complete stories with a beginning, a middle, and end. Like, yeah. they're always setting up hooks for a potential sequel. Um, like, uh, going back to John Wick for an example, though. If there was never a John Wick um, Chapter 2, mm -hmm. John Wick would be fine as a movie. Yeah, I would it's just a put complete it on. story. Beginning, middle, end. Yeah, there's some stuff with the hotel and all that underworld stuff, but you just assume, oh, it's background. He's fucking killing Theon Greyjoy, and yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, but that I don't like the idea of doing season one because with Hitman, I feel like this game was supposed to be a full story from beginning to end. And then right around the next to the last chapter, I think, feel like they figured out they were going to do a season two. Yeah. And so they pivoted the story. And so the last episode of Hitman in Hokkaido has a weird ending where it's like through the entire season of hitman mm -hmm. there's a clear bad guy it's like this guy that's manipulating the ica the group that hitman works for um to take people out so that he can then get to people above those other people yeah um and then like chapter five pivots and it's like oh no there was a mole and it's super important that you kill the mole now mm -hmm. and it's like but the whole story was about this other beardy guy not the mole so suddenly it's almost like they realized they got picked up for another season yeah. and they well, they changed gears. So what if it was the kind of thing that they knew they were going to do it in seasons and the story reflected that? Do you feel like it would be a interesting way to do video games? What if Hitman this entire time was like the mole, the mole, the mole, and then you finally get that mole and then they're like, but who was behind that mole? And then that's what season two, it leads you to that. I, I feel like there's more elegant ways to set that up. Right. Because if you're foreshadowing the bad guy for your game through the entire game, and then in the last mission to the game, it's suddenly about this other guy and not the guy that you've been like chasing and following, mm -hmm. that's just that's clumsy storytelling. And it's one of the only reasons why Hitman isn't, in my opinion, like a perfect game is because the storytelling does it does it it doesn't completely derail it because it's still a super fun game, yeah. but it kind of stumbles towards the end. Whereas it would have been better if they would have written season one with hooks there where they could have season one go from beginning to end and if you got a season two you can start out season two and be like oh it actually turns out that when you were doing this there was a secret player that is now revealed in season two you know yeah. um so we are doing the dlc for alan wake but mm -hmm. so it's fresh in my mind um alan wake is played out like a television series it does yeah. episodes yeah. um even though it's like all together all one just game um, and it has a fairly complete story. It's an ambiguous ending because that's the nature of the story. Yeah. But it does give you enough that it can have a sequel. Yes. Uh, with just the line, it's not a lake, it's an ocean. Right. Um, how do that's, you... That's better. Yeah. That's better. It would It would be like... Uh, what I'm describing in Hitman is like the Barbara character, the Shadow Lady and mm -hmm. Alan Wake. If you found out like two uh, missions from the last mission of Alan Wake that actually there's like another force that... Or there, there was actually like somebody else that you need to be going after. Oh, it turns out Thomas Zane is actually evil. Yeah. And then you go and your last boss fight is you shooting Thomas Zane in the face, and then the game kind of forgets about Barbara, and then it's intimated that she'll be back in Alan Wake 2. Yeah. But if there's never an Alan Wake 2, then... <laughs> they literally, like, lean into the camera and be like, she'll be back in Alan Wake 2. That's Wink! right. And you're like, why is so, it like this? I, I just, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of, like, if you want to write stuff that will work, but I'm a fan of, like, I feel like every season of television should end in a way that if that was your last episode, mm -hmm. you're good to go. Um, now, that is problematic because I think that, like, the best of both worlds from Star Trek is one of the best, like, season-ending cliffhangers of all time. Yeah. Um, 
So you either have to know for sure you're getting that next season, right. or you need to write it like it's a complete story. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what. And I, that's, that's what really. I think. Yeah. And that's really. T- I, yeah. I completely agree. Because who wants like, uh, but everyone's dead and the whole world's uh, collapsing around you. Anyway, we'll see you next time. And then there's no next time. It's like, yeah. great. It's awesome. like the end of uh, you watch Farscape, right? Did you already get to you get through all of it? I haven't gone through all okay. of it. I stopped. It's watching. one of my biggest problems is that the end of season four of Farscape when uh-huh. they got canceled. Um, <clears throat> The ending of that episode could be the ending of the entire franchise, and it would have been fine, except there's like a 60-second codex at the very end (laughs) where they set up a cliffhanger Mm -hmm. for the next season, and it's like, what? What? And it's like if you had just cut like 40 seconds before that, yeah. it would have been fine. But instead, you they left that last piece on there, and so you're not, well, now I, and it's never going to get... Yep. Like, it's never going to get resolved. It was resolved, fortunately. But um, And as far as, is there anything you would specifically... I think there's going to be... To go back, I think there's going to be more and more episodic stuff as time goes on. I yeah. think that companies really like it because it puts you on the hook. They only have to make one episode, and then you will buy a season pass for it, and then they can put out the other episodes at their I leisure. Just feel like it's, it's more expensive. I feel like they're, it's a great way to swindle you out of, like, an extra 10, 20 bucks. Do you think so? I think they can easily manipulate it to be that because that's exactly what DLC turned into. Yeah, probably. Um, so it's it's just I think it's dangerous to let them do it unless they do it in a way that makes sense. Like it made sense to make Alan Wake that way, even though it wasn't really it was released altogether on a disc. Right. Um, but it made sense because Alan Wake, it, a lot of it played into television. Like it was kind of based on Twin Peaks. It was kind of based on uh they had like their twilight zone series in it like Night so the, there's a lot of television elements in it so treating it like a television show worked for that sure um but it doesn't necessarily work for other things so why would you do it oh i'll, I'll go to another example yeah. of a game that that came out all at the same time was not episodic but was broken up like that was asura's wrath uh, was broken up into chapters where each chapter was like an episode of a show Mm -hmm. and it didn't make any fucking sense because i was just sitting down playing the game so like you get to the end of one of these chapters and it would have end credits and it would say next time and i'm just like bitch i am sitting right here yeah like i am going to play chapter four right now i don't need you to remind me and then chapter four would start to be like last time i'm like what the fuck are you doing but alan wake did that too it did the like previously on and i'm not i'm not a big fan of of that kind of division because I mean, just traditionally, the way that video games are structured, I don't need a break. Like, if I'm invested in a game, I don't need you to artificially break up. Yeah. I mean, you could do a thing like Resident Evil 4, like where you end a chapter, and it's like, oh, here's your percentages, now let's go on to the next chapter. But yeah. doing that weird, hard stop, it never really plays very well for me. Uh, what was the horror game that... Oh, man. You're... Five Nights at Freddy's. No, 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 no. Uh, Resident Evil. You're in like a cabin where you make decisions and it's kind of a press X to play kind of game. Until Dawn. Until Dawn. Yeah. That was done in episodes. Yes. Which I, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. And Be- that had a lot of weird, like, previously on, and you're like, why? I'm right, right here. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I think that this goes to a thing that I've been saying for a while now, which is that. TV shows and movies are TV shows and movies, and video games are video games. Yeah. And I understand there's going to be bleed back and forth between the two of them, but I don't feel like video games should try to be TV shows or movies because they're not. They're interactive. They're a fundamentally different medium. The fact they're both on a screen is not important. Right. I mean, they're different elements of storytelling, and you can't try to force it into the other one like it just doesn't work that way i mean it it can kind of come out like a tv series but it, the fact that it's interactive makes it nothing like a television series i mean even tv series i find it ridiculous that netflix puts out an entire season of their shows and there's a title sequence on every one of them because i'm binge watching this like yeah just quit making I, me watch your two minute title sequence every time don't you daredevil. like <laughs> god jesus with daredevil but yeah, no, I don't know. I, I, I like now I'm mad because of that. Uh, I mean, in fairness, a uh, series of unfortunate events, which I didn't enjoy, but uh, each title sequence had a different song. Yep, true, true. That told you something different about every. You know episode. who has a great title sequence? Who? Fucking Breaking Bad, because it's it's all of like five seconds. Like it would take me longer to get up and move the the slider to get past it than it would just to sit there and yeah. watch it. Um. 
and also the second half of the question from B Hammer is: Is there anything you would like to see episodically released video games do differently? I've answered this question, so I'm going to briefly answer it again, and then I want to hear what you have to say, Amanda. Okay. Uh, I think that Hitman was the very best, most perfect, most excellent version of an episodic game of all time mm-hmm. because Hitman, unlike Telltale, unlike a lot of the other games that came out episodically, gave you a legitimate reason to replay every episode over and over and over and over and over again. You got more from replaying those episodes. So honestly, the episodic nature of Hitman was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had because I played every episode of Hitman for like eight to ten hours to get at least just the big kills and to get my rank up to 20 to get all the special perks and bonuses that you would get. Yeah. So... Like, I know every level of Hitman and where a lot of shit is on a lot of... Lo- I'm not going to say every one of them because last Sunday streaming, I was wandering yeah, around... looking for a screwdriver the looking whole time. Looking for a screwdriver yeah. for 25 minutes. But um, but I know those levels as well as I know levels for, you know, like Dark Souls because I've spent so much time in every one of those levels trying to make every one of the little things happen yeah. that you get an achievement for. So um, I think that episodic games work better if it's not just like, oh, the new episode's out. I'm going to play it. It's one hour long, and I'm done with it, and I'm just going to forget about it. Because by playing those Hitman episodes over and over again, every one of those episodes is really deeply ingrained in my mind. And there was value, because you would hear different conversations from important NPCs by going to different areas in each one of the different levels at different times. So you would actually piece together more of the story by playing it over and over again, and the game rewarded you for doing so. Whereas, what the fuck? Are you going to play episode one of Batman Telltale again? Why would you do that? I already know what happens. So besides, you already made your choices. What are you going to go and make all different choices? And then what are you going to have, like, two save games for when episode (laughs) two comes out? Yeah. So I, that's what I want to see out of episodic games is more production value and more replayability. Yeah. How about you? Um, I agree completely that replayability is super important because it's a video game. So you have to, it can't be like a television series where you can watch one episode, that episode, and then you're done and that's it. Sure. Um, I also think that television series have the benefit of having um, filler episodes. Like, they're not the most important episodes, but yeah. they, you know, it's a funny... It had oh, a, Dana a, learned a lesson this yeah, week. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I learned the true meaning of Arbor Day. It right. Like, that doesn't work in video game form because your episodes have to be... Um, like, can you imagine a video game episode of a, a, a equivalent of a clip show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the one episode where, like, the one hitman where he gets stuck in an elevator and has to remember all his, like, previous exploits. Like, that's... Yeah. No one wants that. You can't do that. Um, and I think consistency is really important. I don't know how uh, regularly, if it's like the first of the month, you get a new Hitman episode. It was one a month. Was it and it, was it just months. like rando time of month? Yeah, it would come out so at different times. I think it's really important that if you're going to bother to do that, you need to very clearly tell when it's going to be. Yeah. Well, they always... That, I mean, the nice thing about Hitman was that they also put out lavish trailers for every one of them mm-hmm. and they announced them ahead of time so you were never in the dark it never just dropped out of nowhere yeah but um they did a really really good job with that game like really stunningly good job with that game yeah. so i'm really excited for the second season because that game ended up like i think that ended up as my number three from last year and it might have been eked out by dark souls or might have been number two i don't know mm-hmm. hitman was fucking incredible yeah. uh it was great and that's it. That's our show. Oh, my God. I feel like we're a little bit over an hour, but we're done. Uh, yeah, we might be a little bit long. We'll be like 70 minutes this week. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. Watch out for the creep. The, the, the We're creeping back up to two and a half hours. <laughs> Next week is going to be six hours long. What have I done? <laughs> uh, Amanda, thanks so much for coming in. You guys don't know this, but Amanda actually came in twice this week, mm-hmm. which I normally don't uh, make Amanda do, but I plied her with... Um, Taco Bell and Dr. Pepper. So <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> naked chicken chalupa, Jeff. It's my pleasure. I, <laughs> I like to get naked, but only in chicken chalupa form. <laughs> um, send in your questions to mail at com. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll be back next week with that one. Seriously, sending your questions. And go see John Wick 2. They, they, they let me go for free. And, <laughs> and I got to tell you, if it was a bad movie, I wouldn't be sitting here telling you it wasn't because I like John Wick and I respect all you guys too much to say that. Go see John Wick 2. Fucking rad, man. 